All right, guys, I had a question, and I thought it was a pretty valid and understanding question about this repair that I did in here. And I thought, you know what, this is kind of a great topic for a video because uh, I'm going to go through the process of kind of how I figure out whether I should replace a pa the entire panel or do a repair to it. So somebody asked me, he said, hey, why did you just fix this why not just buy the whole thing and replace the whole thing and like i said that's a valid question so here's some of the things that i go through the process that i go through when i'm trying to um decide when i'm looking at something whether to buy it or to fix it one of the two things so number one i look at the cost of the replacement panel okay this one, in fact, was about a hundred bucks. Uh, I didn't really look; I just looked it up now uh, because I already knew how difficult it was to replace, and that was my decision maker right there. So, um, so I look at the cost of the panel. I like how, how hard it is to replace the entire section. So I'm going to weigh out in man hours what's going to take less time. Is it less time, and am I still going to get a good result if I just do a repair? Um, so I'm going to look at that. Then I'm gonna look at things like this. Uh, the new panel, is it, what brand is it? You know, is it gonna fit right? Is it gonna have the same lines in it? Is it gonna have the same holes in it? And the answer to that is also no. The new one does not, I don't think it has these holes here. And that's for the uh, reserve switch and stuff like that, and the uh, choke cable. So I'd probably have to drill those and figure that out. So that's fabrication time there. Um, so I kind of weigh out a lot of things. And so let's kind of look at this and then we'll kind of talk about some of these things that I do, which, you know, this is just to teach you how to make decisions on your metal work. So if you look at here to replace this thing, you have to cut out all this here, all the way along here. You have to go up under here remove this whole section here all the way along and then remove it all in here cut this out remove all the metal come around here remove and there's some stuff underneath and what you've got is a sandwich piece of two metal they I think they come uh, with both pieces together um, so you got to remove all that you have to clean all that you have to probably drill holes through there the drilling takes a lot of time to do and then you have to set the new one in and then spot weld it in place and then after I was all done doing that it would not look exactly the same if you look at the new ones they don't have this thing they don't have this they don't have these two holes kind of generic looking does not look like original metal it's clocker clocker home uh, it's probably not as thick as what's on here. So again, like I said, those were compensating factors as well. But I didn't even get into that because I was like, I figured this would be a very easy repair to do for me. Back years ago, I when I was doing metal work, when I first started doing stuff, you know, everything was about money. You know, it was always about, I'd do the cheapest thing because I, I could just make it, you know, and it didn't matter how much time it took me. You know, because I was young and eager, and it didn't matter. It was all about money. I didn't have any money, so I used to do a lot of make, fabricate a lot of things. So I got pretty good at it. And you know, that's when you know, this has been a long time since I started doing this stuff. So if you if you you know think about all that, it was easier. I look at it and I'm going. This is going to take me a couple of hours to do to do the entire section. It would probably take me oh a good solid day or two to do all the cleaning work because of the access so if you look here this is very tight in here hard to get to looks let's, let's get the other side of the panel so on this side it's folded on this edge so what you're looking at is it's uh probably it's two layers right here so the drill holes along here weld it on the top or pinch it with the spot welder yeah, it, you know, it's a difficult piece to replace. So you look at the man hours it's going to take to do that. Now, you can spend a lot of time fixing this panel here and that other side. 
you know, in the amount of time that it takes to do the other. It literally, I would say, the time I spent doing this was less than a whole day. You know, it wasn't even a whole day of work to do. And I think the time to do this whole thing would have probably taken me, because you got to remove it, you got to clean it, you got to get all this old metal off of here, got to clean all that, get it all ready, drill it, weld it, you add up all, those all that time, and it's going to take a lot of time to do. So let's talk about this bus real quick, a couple things on it, so that you can see different things that... Um, decision-making process that you go through it's basically it's like a math equation man hours parts cost and all that together you can even write it all down say yeah, it's gonna take me five man hours figure out what you're worth an hour and if it's gonna take more time then it's gonna cost it replace it then uh, you go from there so these corners about I don't know seven or eight years ago used to be only available to the belt line okay and it was a skin so you had to clean this entire section all the way down if you wanted to cut it the right same place I wouldn't I'd always just cut it somewhere lower but you'd have to you know cut it right here replace it you have to remove all this inner panel here and down they used to only make that corner and it was five hundred dollars so it was pretty easy to make a decision to do a DIY repair panel for the lower corner uh, there was only there was available you had the clocker home corner pieces which were totally not formed correct and they were like I'd say at the time they were like 50 or 60 dollars and they were just they did not go from this seam to this seam they kind of had like they stopped like right in here somewhere and they stopped like right in here so you still had to you know, hodgepodge weld stuff in i bought a set of those and honestly it was more work for me to make that corner fit than it was if i just made the whole thing by myself which was when i did these i cut them or i bent the metal this way and it went straight down then i slit cut up rolled it underneath okay and made that whole corner for this and it looks good now and it looks fine so you know those are the types of things i i just I, you know they weren't 500 dollars when i did this they were like 138 for repair section which isn't too bad really it's almost worth it to buy them now uh especially with inflation and everything else and your time being worth less you know it's almost worth it to buy them but I wanted to show the people in some countries that that they're not 138 bucks in Australia. I'll tell you right now, they are not. You guys in Australia be like, oh no, that's so cheap. I'd buy them. Heck yeah, you would. So um, this is the type of thing you know you, you you figure out man hours versus time. So a lot of the guys in other countries are trying to make stuff and they're trying to have to figure it out. So when they watch those videos that I made, the corners on this that was really helpful to them. That's why I did it that way. Not just because I was trying to totally cheap out. I wanted people to see stuff that, you know, is doable. So if you look here, these rockers are really cheap. It's never a decision to try and make those on these. Um, these repair panels really are not shaped very well, but they're kind of handy. They go on pretty easily, but if you can see that thing looks like it's kind of winged out a little bit. That's because the metal is terrible that I get. You know, the, it was like, I don't think they even had clocker home ones available when I was getting those. They were the only the orange ones, which are really fat, badly misshaped. I, and I didn't really want to take in the time and sit there and fit it, make everything fit perfect. Like the dog legs, the new ones, the, the quality is, is awful on some of these things. I mean, they just, when they weld the things together, I've gotten dog legs where these things were just like i almost wanted to take them off and cut all the welds away and then re-weld it because they're just like so misshaped you know and inside of them is not protected at all so you need to make sure you do that when you put new ones on where like the heater channels on this i 
wanted to keep them as original as possible. I, I just love these old welds in the corners in here. You know, I, I want to keep, you know, this car as original as possible because it's just so rare to see a car that's this nice. So I did spend a lot of time doing doing this sill plate on this one, but I think it's worth it when I've got this nice original heater channel there, just for the look. They do look a little bit different than the replacement ones, unless you get the classic fab makes some really good ones. And that's kind of where you gotta look and know what your parts are that are available and know how good the quality of them are. And because if you just buy them without knowing, um, you're going to be shocked sometimes when you get them. You're going to be like, oh, man, those just don't. Man, that seems like I did the wrong way. I probably would have been better off saving it. So that's experience is the only thing that can you can get that will tell you that. So, like, these are the types of things I'm trying to teach guys like CT and stuff like that where he's very new at this. You're constantly, and when, you don't, when you're new, you always just think, Grab a brand, brand new repair panel. It's going to be the easiest route. And sometimes it isn't. So again, what you're going to try to do is do a mock-up idea in your head. Okay, how what is it going to take for me to cut this out? Look at where all the corners and edges are. Where it's going to line up. What's going to be the difficult part about lining up the new one? What's going to be the about difficult part about cutting out the old is it going to take me a long time to get this old one out? Would have a lot of layers of metal. Am I going to damage the metal around where I'm cutting out the old one? You know, when I'm cutting it out, trying to remove the layers, you know, and how much repair am I going to have to it from doing that? You're going to want to weigh out things like, is it an original panel? Is it in good shape other than the one area that needs to be rep repaired? You know, is it totally different shape than the new one? You know, those are all the things, like I said, you're going to want to weigh out when you do a repair. So, like, when I was working on this truck, I had, you know, decision making was some of the stuff was kind of weird because I was like, one of the problems was if I cut out every piece of bad metal, there literally was no truck left. So, I had to sort of figure out what I had to keep because there was stuff that I knew I wanted to replace like the nose was was a giveaway that was so bad all the way around it there was no saving the nose that was on this see when they look like that the bottom is rusted around the lights are rusted the tops rusted you're just not going to save something like that especially when the panels say this one I think is not even 400 bucks it's you know but you don't get the headlights with it you don't get the turn to well you uh, i don't know i had to reuse the turn signal cutouts yeah that's right and uh, all that stuff so that was a bit more work but it was still totally worth it to replace same thing with these doors um they were just there's nothing here to save the bottoms rusted out the sides the front hinges the top i mean there was nothing there there was no decision to make that was just junk See, on this thing, in order to support the roof, I had to figure out what parts of the sides that I needed to save to keep the roof intact. And the roof had holes all the way around it. It was really hard trying to figure out how to save this thing and to get it all done. Because it was just so bad. The rust holes were all the way, you know, this whole thing should have been replaced. You know, this... I mean, everything should have been replaced, but I had to save enough stuff to structure the roof so that the doors would fit. But the bed was kind of like, everything was bad, and I just had to rebuild all that, and I knew that it was possible to do that. But the cab is much more intricate because you have things like this line. that goes down, the front of the door is at an angle like that, and it's round, and it's, two different planes of round so yeah it's uh you know there's a lot going on with these doors you know in the front of this thing i almost think that when they built these they made the door first and then they fit the cab to the door so they would put the door on and then fit the cab 
and then put the rest of the panels on the cab. I'm thinking that's how they did it. Because like some of the guys were making doors and they're going, how come the doors don't fit? But it's like you need to make the cab fit the door, not the door fit the cab. Because it's easier. There's more movement you can do on the other parts. The door is one piece. You can't move it around. But the other stuff you can. So that's the only way I could figure that they must have made these. So like I had on this thing, I had to save this panel even though it was totally bad the top the bottom was bad but if i cut that thing out i had no place to weld a support to to hold the roof in place because i really these were wasted on both sides you know and the only thing that was any good is the centerpiece so you're not going to get enough support to hold this thing in place with just posts being welded to there holding the roof in which the roof was rotten you know it was just like there it was really hard to figure out how to save something this bad so those are the types of things i'm trying to talk to you guys about this was like the highest level of possible trying to save something that you could ever do because it's just there was nothing really that was savable everything was bad and just trying to decide how to keep it and make it work and the truck runs great now goes drives around like like a brand new truck so for instance these gear quarters they're really hard to work on these quarters are also really expensive so you know it's really hard to kind of weigh these out you know these things get you know they're really hard to work on they're really expensive and the reason is is because you've got right up to about right here right in here you can only get to the you can get to the inner panel on this you can get to this piece of metal like if you look at that side over there you can get to the inner pan you can get to the outer panel now from up here there's two layers of metal all the way up so it gets trying to you can't get in there with anything to straighten it from the inside you gotta do all your work you can from the outside it's really hard to do but then again these quarters are just astronomically expensive i can't remember it was i think it was over a thousand dollars for a quarter so you're 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 gonna do a lot of work to one of these before you decide to replace it that's gonna have to be like to me if it was like crunched all the way in something bad and i'd have to replace it otherwise i'd be working on that thing same thing with the front fenders you know this one didn't have a front fender so we had to butt weld one in and um yeah it's really hard to butt weld one of these fenders in and get it right um so you got that issue then you've got you know the expense of a new fender so again, you're going to do a lot of work to that fender. You could patch panel it, patch it, repair it, make stuff. You can do all kinds of stuff to a fender like that, you know, and really, I mean, they're, I think they're over a thousand dollars too. I don't know the exact price. I didn't look it up or anything before uh, and, and they're only available, I think in Europe. So anyway, I just thought I would explain some of the stuff to you guys. Um, everything has price of the part the amount of time it's going to take me is going to take me less time to repair it than it is to replace it um a lot of times that's one of the reasons i'll do it the other reason is uh, if i add the cost of the part the amount of time that's going to take me those two two things together more and is it going to be still um, cheaper than the part plus the hours and then sometimes i'll just not care about my hours because I just don't want to spend, you know, those things that I'll just look at and I'll just go, you know what, that's a rip off. You know, that price, I don't think, that, I don't understand. You know, when I can buy a whole quarter panel for my Nova Super Sport convertible and it's a tenth of the price of a fender for this, that's just crazy. So I just don't want to give them my money. And sometimes I'll be behind by doing that. But it's the way I figure, that's my way of schooling people. So. That's what I figure. 
anyway i hope that helps you guys maybe figure out why i do some of the stuff i do and then might help you to figure out how to do your stuff and how to assess it and figure out what to do when to do it you know no one to hold them no one to fold them no one to walk away no one to run you know the old song okay no one to do all that stuff that's the thing that you got to master when you do this type of work anyway i'll talk to you next video please like share and subscribe